Good morning. This is Father Jamie. I hope y'all are having a wonderful Thursday morning or whatever time of day it is for you. I just wanted to reflect a little bit on what we call uh, Holy Week and the Triduum. So Holy Week for Catholics is the week of the year. It is the most important and it is the most celebratory. And so it begins with Palm Sunday. So Palm Sunday is when we celebrate the triumphal uh, entrance of Jesus into Jerusalem. So, you know, scripture uh, tells us that he comes into Jerusalem on, um, on the donkey and people lay out palm branches in front of him, you know, crying out, you know, Hosanna in the highest, you know, the King of David. And so there's this beautiful image of him making his entrance into Jerusalem. And so uh, on Palm Sunday at the church, we have a Palm Sunday procession. And so we, um, everyone receives a palm branch and the priest, of course, being in persona Christe in the person of Christ, processes in as Jesus would have. Some places do actually <laughs> have the priest come in on a donkey um, you know, it, it's pretty cool to see how elaborate some of those processions can be, which is beautiful. And so we'll be doing that at Blessed Mother. Uh, probably not with a donkey. <laughs> but anyway, there will be the procession with, with palm branches. And uh, things will be a little different for that Mass. So the priest will actually, or the deacon, will read um, from the Gospel uh, at the beginning of Mass, uh, at, before the procession begins, uh, reading about this triumphal entrance into Jerusalem. And then after that, Mass as usual, until we get to um, the Gospel reading before the homily. And it's a longer Gospel passage, and it's basically the events um, through Jesus' Passion. So the other name for Palm Sunday is Passion Sunday because this is when we reflect on Jesus' passion, uh, dying on the cross. And so um, the gospel ends with uh, Jesus being laid in the tomb. So it's, uh, and there's actually a lot of parishes uh, will have books so that <clears throat> the, the congregation actually takes part in uh, the, the reading of the gospel. So there's you know, the congregational part of um, playing the part of the crowd uh, that are gathered around ordering for Jesus' uh, execution. And then there's other people that might be given the, uh, the role of Peter, of Pilate, and some of the other important figures in uh, this drama of salvation history. So then after Palm Sunday, the next few important days of Holy Week, one for us is the Chrism Mass. And so that is when the bishop gathers all of the priests and the three different oils are blessed and consecrated. And of course, the bishop is the only one who can consecrate the Chrism oil, which is used to ordain people, confirm people, dedicate altars and churches. Um, also during that Mass, the priests, we make, we um, renew our priestly promises. And uh, so in the Diocese of Owensboro, we celebrate this Mass in the sports center. So we try to invite as many people uh, that can come. And it'll be 6.30 Tuesday night. And um, so every parish sends two representatives or more to receive the oils from uh, the bishop. So that's the significant thing of, of the Chrism Mass. Then <clears throat> Holy Thursday, so that technically is the end of Lent. So Lent ends with the celebration of evening prayer. If you celebrate evening prayer, of course we priests have to, but uh, when evening prayer is celebrated, then Lent is over 
and we move into the Triduum, which is the three big days. And so Holy Thursday night is the participation in the Last Supper and the institution of the Last Supper. And so a couple other things will happen there. The oils from the Chrism Mass will be brought and presented. Then Mass as usual until we get to after the homily. Then we will have the celebration of the washing of the feet, which happened at the Last Supper. And so we'll invite people to come up to have their feet washed by me or Father Mike. And then um, Mass as usual until we get to the very, um, the very end. And so after the Last Supper is when Jesus and the apostles go to the Garden of Gethsemane, which is um, after that is when the whole drama of the crucifixion begins. So the other important thing to note about the Triduum is, is it is technically one continuous Mass from Thursday through the Easter Vigil. So there's no final blessing at the end of the Last Supper Mass. Um, what happens is Jesus in Holy Communion in the Blessed Sacrament um, is processed to what we call an altar of repose. So it's kind of, you know, we're going with Jesus to the Garden of Gethsemane. And we are asked to spend an hour in adoration being with Jesus since his apostles could barely stay awake for one hour. A lot of places will even continue adoration into the night. And um, so that happens. Then we have Good Friday. And so then um, we have the priest comes in and um, lies prostrate on the floor, comes in in silence, no no congregational singing or anything. We come in in silence. And then we have um, the Liturgy of the Word as usual. But then we read the Gospel again, and usually one of the other Passion narratives. And um, then after that, we have um, solemn petitions where we pray for the, the church and the world. We process the cross in and have veneration of the cross. So these are very significant things. And um, then we'll have res the communion that was reserved from the night before brought back out. And we have uh, Holy Communion given to us again, but not a consecration because the consecration has already happened at the Last Supper Mass. Um, so then after that, you know, we leave in silence and we prepare for the Easter Vigil. So Saturday... Um, for those of you in RCIA, that's when we have our retreat and go to confession. And we reflect a lot on Jesus um, going to the land of the dead. And I'll talk more about that at the retreat. So I won't give anything away there. And then, of course, the Easter Vigil itself, which is the celebration of the year, the most solemn, most beautiful and the longest of our celebrations. And so basically, we have the Easter fire. We have, I'm just covering a few points because I don't want to give everything away for those of you that are doing this for the first time. Um, you know, we meet at night. So we have this beautiful Easter fire. We process into the church. We have a much longer liturgy of the Word. We really go through all of salvation history from Genesis, um, and of course, at Blessed Mother, we don't pick and choose readings. We do all of them. As Father Mike says, what part of salvation history are you wanting to cut out? <laughs> we tell it all. And then, uh, then of course, after um, the Liturgy of the Word and the homily, we initiate those that are wanting to be baptized, confirmed, and coming into full communion with the church. And so it all comes to the Easter Vigil, the celebration of the Resurrection. So that is what we are looking forward to. So I just ask us to continue to refocus, recenter ourselves, and those of you who are coming into full communion with the church, um, don't worry so much about what is happening. You've heard me say this before. 
um, participate. Uh, don't anticipate, participate. Let the celebrations happen in front of you and experience them. Don't worry about what's going to happen. And really, I'm not just telling RCIA people this, but everybody, because sometimes we get too caught up in what we're anticipating and we don't fully participate. So these liturgies are meant to be experienced and to just be totally enveloped in them. So let's do this well. Let's pray well. Let's celebrate well and look forward to our Lord's resurrection.